Hello and welcome to my new trip report. Today I'm in Tromsø, Norway and I'm taking the Hurtigruten or Costa Express down to Molde. This trip will take me down the Norwegian coastline. Some of the stops are Harstad, Svolver, Bude, Trondheim and Kristiansund. You will see the Lofoten Island and the Trollfjord. The whole journey will take about three nights and three days, arriving in Molde late in the evening. And here's my ride, the MS Rickert Witt. The ship was built in 1993 at Volkswagen in Germany and has 458 beds. And for all the ship nerds out there, the length is 121.8 meters and has, has a top speed of 18 knots. The ship is named after Richard Bernard Witt, who lived from 1846 to 1930. He was a Norwegian ship captain, businessman and politician. He is also the founder of the Hurtigruten. But now it is time to board in the middle of the night. The ship leaves Stromsø at about 1.30 am. Just to be clear, the Hurtigruten is not a cruise company. They are a Norwegian public coastal route transporting passengers that travel locally, regionally and between the ports of Kohl and also cargo between ports north of Tromsø. When you look at the faces of the people, you might imagine when this was filmed. The check-in is easy and simple. Like in a hotel, you stand in line, wait for your turn and then you get handed your keys. And even if they are not a cruise company, that's where they make money by offering cruises for people going from Bergen up to the north in Kirkenes and back. Welcome to Deck 5, my home for the next three nights. Originally I booked a cabin without any windows. But since some of those are used for travelers with animals and I have an allergy, I got upgraded to a cabin with windows. Welcome to my temporary home. Let's take a tour of my cabin. First, there's of course a storage for your clothing and you also have some storage for personal items and uh, electricity outlets and an old telephone for onboard communication. And I bought some apples for the trip, but I come back to that later. You have a TV screen on board, which will show you some information about activities, questions you might have about the trip, the boat, but it will not give you any television. As I mentioned, this is not a real cruise ship, so the standard is quite basic, at least at the cheapest cabin that I bought. I had a small folding table with two outlets below, which was great for watching Netflix and working on the PC. You also has had a bigger working table, which was great for working and was connected to the other side of the bed. This is a two bed cabin and the bed is hidden inside the wall. This bed is also your seat since you don't have a real chair inside the cabin. At least if you are two persons that want to sit opposite each other. It is the next morning and time to take a little tour around the ship. I'm not the back of the boat where you can find two whirlpools with a nice view. As you could read before, this is the port of Harstad. I'm now on deck 7 and what I call it the entertainment area. Most leisure activities on board will happen up here and as you can see there's a guy giving you information in several languages. At the moment he's giving information about the islands around with all the people standing there in the terrible autumn weather. Downstairs on the ship you find the entrance and exit area. Every time you have to leave the ship or come back your keycard is scanned at this entrance.
This is also the reception area that you saw before. They also have a storage room for luggage. The word Hürtegrüten is meaning express route. It is an historic Norwegian coastal service that has been operating since 1893. Originally established to improve communications along Norwegian's rock coastline, it provides a year-round passenger and cargo transport between Bergen and Kirkenes, with 34 ports of call. The route has evolved from a critical mail and passenger service to a popular travel experience. Today, Hütterücken also runs expedition cruises to destinations like Greenland and Antarctica, then transition with modern adventure. And if this sounded like an advert, this was from Wikipedia. This route runs on a timetable. And since we are behind the timetable most of the time, there were not many opportunities to leave the boat in harbors. Here in Stockmark Ness, I had about 10 to 15 minutes to leave the boat, take some pictures and find a geocache. This is the cargo loading area and you even can take your car with on your trip. So for example, if you want to go from Bergen to Tromsø and take your car with you, you can do it for a price and then drive your way down. Time to leave again and this is the public area on deck 5. So my cabin also has a window this, which is on this level and if you want you can look into it. Which might be quite inconvenient for the suites that ha they have on deck 5 in the front, where you have big panoramic windows by people standing in front taking a good look at the view in both directions. And of course Hürtelruten is up to standard when it comes to lifeboats and life-saving equipment. I don't want to use it. Let's finish the round trip on deck 5. We'll also find a shop and some restaurants on this ship. The shop is mostly offering literature, souvenirs and some clothing for your trip. There were several restaurants and a bistro, but they were very pricey. And coming back to the apples in my cupboard earlier in this video, I bought most of my food that I wanted to eat before I went on board. You have the option when you are booking to buy food with you, but a whole food package for breakfast, lunch and dinner will cost you about 120 to 150 euros a day. Since I didn't want to spend that kind of money for three days on the ship, I prepared myself in the shop in Tromsø. I ate a pizza in the bistro here on my last evening, which was quite nice. And then I had a restaurant visit in Svulver on Lofoten. If you are eating here, you are assigned the time and it was quite funny when group three had to go to dinner and everybody was running throughout the restaurant. The menu of the day is posted on the door to the restaurant. The shop is also the place where you can ask about uh, excursions that you can participate in about things happening and of course you can buy the stuff that you see here. They also had this small auditorium where they would show movies and photos and uh, you could hear people talking about the trips. But for the most part what you could do on this ship is to watch the beautiful Norwegian landscape. I will just leave you to enjoy the view for some minutes.
One highlight of this trip is entering the Troll Fjord. The fjord has a narrow entrance and steep sided mountains surrounding it. The name is derived from Troll, a figure from Norse mythology. It is a tourist attraction and the Hurtigruten is going here every day. The only way not to go here by ship is taking a 10 mile hike above the mountains. Since this is a dead end, we had to turn around and drive the same way back. Time to say hello to a northbound ship of the Hurtigruten. That was quite loud hello. Finally we have the most beautiful weather you can imagine and we are close to crossing the Arctic Circle. Which you can only see by seeing a small globe put on a small island on the left hand side of the picture now. <laughs> and many ships do a baptizing ceremony when you cross the Arctic Circle. On this trip it meant you were supposed to eat a full spoon of tran or fish liver oil and I definitely did not participate in that one. But talking about activities on this ship, Hurtigruten offers a lot of excursion that you can book in several harbors. What I found out is that most of these trips are quite expensive and if you want to do this in every harbor and doing the whole trip from Bergen up to Kirkenes that will cost you nearly as much as the whole trip. Especially if you are more than one person. An alternative to doing the bus trips for a lot of money, not being manager of your own time, would be to rent your own car from a private person. There is at least one company in Norway where you can rent a private car. I said that because I rent out my own car to people on cruises and the feedback I get is that they appreciate the possibility to do the trips for a cheaper price on their own pace. And we will also have a point of interest Time to finish the tour of my cabin and this is the small bathroom that you can find here. Nothing luxurious but it does its work and it was quite okay. And this is the sofa and uh, of course this will become bed number two if you want to. Very easy to handle. And I lied earlier in this video because there was something that looked like a chair, was not the most comfy one. And you get the view out of my window onto deck five. 
There's also a small gym on board which you can use. At this time you had to book it in the reception desk and you could not be more than two persons here. But I think that is a thing of the past. This is Torque Hutton. It, it's a mountain that has a big hole in it. The hole is about 160 meters long, 35 meters high and 20 meters across. It's said to be a tourist attraction with about 100,000 visitors a year. So if you're in the area, you might check it out. Welcome to Trondheim, the fourth biggest city in Norway, but the secret capital, at least some people think about that. This is one of the ports where you have time to spend and you should do it. On my trip I had more time in ports of Svulver in Brønnesund, which was quite boring, here in Trondheim, which is a beautiful city of the time, and then in Kristiansund. Now sailing into the harbor of Kristiansund and that is not far from home. If someone asks me what is the nicest part of the trip and I'm thinking about the landscape, I have to say the area from Harstad down to a little bit south of Brønnesund is the one that I like the most. But I think you have to experience it yourself and find out what you like the most. What I found out on this trip is that I am not made for cruises. I think it is quite boring sitting on the ship all the time and looking out the window at the landscape. But it might be great for you if you want to calm down, reduce the stress, just live your life and let time fly by. That would be perfect for you. Just be sure what your expectations for this trip are. If you want to have this experience with no big uh, entertainment and party, Hürtigrüt is the best for you, otherwise you might look at one of the big cruise lines that do a little bit more entertaining and active stuff. I also have to say that the average age on Hürtigrüt is quite high, so I've not heard many families doing this trip. But you also consider the alternative that I did, you can book from harbor to harbor, so taking one or two harbors at a time and then decide what you want to do further. Maybe for you it's best to check out the homepage of Hurtigruten and find out which kind of travel is best suited for you. But unfortunately all trips come to an end and now in the dark I'm arriving at my home port of Molde where I can walk home. It has been an interesting trip and an interesting experience for me. And even if I said this cruise life is nothing for me, I still consider doing the rest of the Hürtigruten on my own pace. I would love to do the trip from Molde to Bergen, which is about two days, and the trip from Tromsø up to the north, Kirkenes, the end stop of Hürtigruten. Entering the port of Molde, I have to say thank you for joining me on this amazing journey. I hope you enjoyed exploring it with me as much as I did. Remember, travel is the only thing you buy that makes you richer. If you love this adventure, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a moment of our next adventure. Until next time, keep wandering and keep wondering. See you all. Thank you.